Hi, I'm Marie Eldridge. I'm an educator in the Handy Quilter Studio. And we're going to do the ditch ruler, and I'm going to explain some of the markings on this ruler first. So as you look at this ruler, you can see all the grid lines. There's some dotted lines. Those mark it in quarter inch, and then the solid lines make it in a half inch. And then down here, there's also more measurements that help you out as you place this ruler. You always want to make sure that when you use this ruler that you have the etched side down. That makes it so it lines up exactly. And speaking of lining up exactly, that's what this ruler is for. I like to think of these little break points, these little points on the end, that they are pointers. They're going to point exactly where your stitching is going to end up. So I have my needle already set. I'm going to bring this ruler in. And you can see right here, the tip of that marks exactly where the edge of that block is. So I know I'm lined up for my stitching to end up exactly in the ditch or right on that marked line. So I'm just going to go up. And that's sort of about as much as I have control. So I'm going to slide the ruler up a little bit more and make sure I am in line. And that makes stitching in the ditch so easy. So when you're doing stitch in the ditch, you always want to change your stitches per inch. Change that so it's kind of smaller, like 14 stitches per inch, and that just sinks those little stitches right into the ditch line. Also, when you're stitching in the ditch, you always have a high side and a low side, or the side where the seam is pressed to. So it's better to stitch on the low side, and then it will bury right in there. All right, so here's the magic on this also. I'm going to do mark the centers of this square and use this ruler to make a star. And it when you're setting a ruler up at an angle, it always makes it hard to kind of decide exactly where you're aiming for. So I'm going from corner to center, center to corner. So if I put my edge on there and just line that up so that that is headed right for my mark, there you can see right there, I'm right on the mark and I'm going to line up exactly with it. Sometimes I think I'm headed right for it and I'm going to get it, and then when I get closer to the corner, I'm off. So I'm lining up right here with the edge of this ditch ruler and right to that corner. So as I go along, again, I'm going from center to corner. And then I'm going to go from corner to center. So I've got the side of that lined up right there. And then I'll just slide my ruler. And from the corner, I'm going to come over to this center. So I'm just lining that up so it's kind of right on that just pointing right to that corner. It's going to bring me right in there. Close. <laughs> this probably was a square was just a little bit larger than I should have shown you on this one, but I've still got this lined up there. It gives me another chance to see if we can get right on it. And one last one. Line up here to there. And over to this side. And back to the end. So I'm just lining up again from here to there. Right to the corner. All right. So you can see how it kind of helps you line up exactly. I have some flying geese stitched out over here, and I can really show you on these because they're short how this is going to keep you right on. So if I start, let's just start over here, right here. We'll do one. 
Okay, so I still like to leave my needle down and then bring my ruler in. So I'm going to, going to put the tip of that right on the edge and then bring the ruler against my hopping foot. And you can see I'm using the sure foot on this. I really like it with these rulers. And I'm not necessarily using the handy grip on this because I'm moving the ruler so much. It's kind of a personal choice. If you feel like you need your ruler to stay put more, just use one or two pieces. So once I have that on there, I'm going to follow this stitched line and I'm headed for there. So I'm going to move it off just a little bit and then I can stay right on that line. Again, I can just flip this around. I'm going to put the edge of that right on there. And I always think, oh, it should be just a little different, but it ends up being right. And then I slide that out of my way. And then it just points to where you want to go. So it just works. Now these are uh, uh, what I think are a typical flying geese, like four inches by two inches. And this ditch ruler has this little curved edge on it and it just puts a nice curve on here. So if I set that so that that arc fits right around my hopping foot, and then I just go from there and go up to the top, you can see it just makes a really nice little, little arc on there. I just think it looks so formal. Again, I'm gonna put my pointing that right where I wanna go. Whoops. Okay, so sometimes <laughs> best laid plans, right? Okay, we'll see how this one works. We're gonna hook that in there. We're headed up here for, do the arc, here we go. Walk it right in there. So look how cute those look, and that's a great way, that's a great tool to use for your flying geese. The other thing is I've got these little boxes which you can see, you can just add just a tiny bit to the side of the square. So here's some that have a space in between. Here's some that are right next to each other. And I'm just gonna show you, you, you hardly use any of this curve inside the box. I'm going to line up the center of the ruler with the center of the square. And it's not even inside. It's like just barely touching the stitched line. So I'm going to stitch around there to get that side, around there to get that side. And that just gives that little tiny elegant kind of, I just like that little tiny curve taken out of there. I think they look so cute with just that little tiny bit here and here. All right, for sure you have to do piano keys with this ruler. So the great thing about it is that on your markings, as you do your markings, they show up exactly. You use that little pointer to get you on and it stays on. So we'll just start right on this one that's already marked and I've just marked this with a chalk pencil. So I'm going to bring that in and just do the first one and get over. Now, how to line up for the second one. The second one, you're kind of going to go, these are like half inch, which I marked this all half inch, and then these I did one in between. But I'm going to bring my ruler in, and I have it lined up on the grid, so I know it's a half inch, but if I bring this down so I have that pointing exactly to my mark, that is double assurance that I am right where I need to be. And I'll just come up most of the way, slide my ruler up. And on piano keys, I like to go up and back on the same line. So I'm just gonna go over a little ways. And I'm doing this outside in the, where the binding's going to be. So I can double stitch that. I don't have to worry about my travel line as much. All right, again, I have this quarter inch grid that I can line up on my last stitch. Then I'm going to bring that tip of that down and line up exactly so that I know I'm going to hit it right on the mark. And I'm going to go up and then move my ruler up a little bit and I'm right on. So one of the things about doing um, piano keys when you come to the corner, when I mark, I always mark from the corner out. So I know I'm gonna hit right in the middle. So if I need to fudge, I can fudge out in here, but right here, everything's going to end up squared. Now that it's right 
I've stitched that corner. I've drawn a line across on a diagonal. So this one I'm going to just line up with that quarter inch. So I have the grid set starting. I'm going to stitch till I get to the line. Then I'm going to come over here and do the other way. And I always want this to be stitched a second time so that it looks just like the ones that were on this side. So then you just move over and you just line up with your grid line on the stitched line. And I mark this side down at the bottom so that I line up. Okay, so you just double stitch those as well. You just stitch until you hit that diagonal line and then you move over. Okay, so I usually don't go right to the very corner. I'll usually leave like a little bit of a gap right in the corner. So this ruler I think is going to be one of your use all the time. You always stitch in the ditch. I think you're going to like this ruler. It's just going to be one of those that it's a staple. It's one you have to have on your quilt to use.